Hello and welcome to jobskillshare.org. This video is going to be a hands-on technical video where you are going to learn many things. This is like once you get a request or maybe an issue. Now since I know this stuff, I am going through many tools over here to fix this issue very quickly. But for someone new to IT, you need to learn how to do these things individually. So I am going to show you where you need to learn and how you can use the the method that I'm using to fix this issue and you can be using it for other things too. So real world scenario is that there are so many updates coming out for Windows 10 and once you have a deployment, uh, maybe at that time people were deploying let's say a 16299 and you can see there's 16299, 299, 299. But then maybe another deployment came in pretty quickly and now they have a different update for Windows and this way your company or wherever you work it, they get multiple systems just for Windows 10 machine now Windows 10 it is kind of a little problematic in a way that when you have an issue that you need to fix on a specific version then you come across these type of issues like where you have multiple machines then how do you push that out to these machines of course you can use some really advanced tools but what if you don't have these tools then how do you use things that whatever you have like Active Directory uh, you know how to access Active Directory get a report out of it without using any tool um, and then after that once you have this report of course after that you can use one of your tools like PDQ to to send and fix to that machines so the main purpose of this video is to if you have a list like this first I'm going to show you how do you filter stuff so if you have a, um, a list like this you just go to the sort filter and in here go to filter and right here on the top you're going to see this operating systems now if I they say I want to know how many uh, you know one uh, how many machines with 14393 is in this system so you can see it's about 100 and what 138 machines with 14393 now the question is that how do you know this version is what like you know there this is a different number when you go to the computer and you type this number let's say when you do the win ver when you type this command win ver you're not going to see 1709 over here now this is different you can see it says the built 16299 it tells you write that with there right but sometimes you may not see this 16299 so where you are going to see this information this is where you need to go to internet and then you will type Windows 10 release information if you just go here you can also type this too Windows 10 version I typed it wrong Windows 10 version and then when you click on the first link you're going to get to this part and now here you see if I open my message again you can see right here if I see 16299 it is going to be related to this one you can see the top one right there 1709 so I know in my 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 list this is 1709 because that's where many of the systems are going to only show you this number sometimes they don't show you this you know why when you do the reporting and stuff like that so that's a, just a little tip but let's go back to the video now like the main thing that we are trying to cover how do you get that list uh, by using Active Directory you know, how you are you going to because you have so many machines all around your company how are you gonna get that that is the main key of this video but while we are doing this I need to tell you that what I'm using I'm using Network Plus which is the practice labs like if you go to jobsclashare.org and you get the premium membership you get access to all these labs so this gives you an environment kind of like a company type of environment where you have Active Directory uh, another server and then uh, Windows 10 8 7 machines and now I am in 0, uh, 007 lab and I am actually doing install OS updates and configure security policy now I'm not doing this lab I, I don't care about this lab I just need to use these machines that I have in this lab right now on the bottom you see 51 minutes you can click on it to make it 60 you can do that as long as you have finished your lab and our goal is to basically get a report out so then we can know how many systems do we have in the company with Windows 10 and what version that is going to be our goal but in this case we have Windows 7 to play around with so this is our Windows 7 machine imagine this is your help desk machine where you have you're working on Windows 7 right now you could be using Windows 10 too 
Well, in, in this case, we're using just Windows 10 to find information. And Windows 10 is going to be our admin machine. And here is our domain controller. We're not going to mess around with this one because in a real world environment, you're not going to get access to domain controller uh, if you're working for help desk. Most likely, you may have access. This is a another server. You may have access to one of the servers that you can do these kind of things. So we'll do that on the server also. First, we're going to do this process on a Windows 10 machine. Now, for this, you need to know the commands. And another thing that you will learn in this video is also how to use commands from outside into this lab because this is you can't just copy paste um, to it unless you just go to the e uh, Internet Explorer and search it directly in there. Maybe yeah, but um, you're gonna have problems doing that. So I'm gonna show you since I, I want to show this in a way that people can do the labs like you know PowerShell commands and things like that. So that will be good too. So number one, we need to learn about this. Uh, name are remote server administration tools for Windows 10, 7, 8. R SAT. This is very important for you because most of the time when you start working in a company, somebody have already configured that for you. So you, today you're actually configuring it for yourself. Okay. What if your computer crashes, and after six months and you don't know this, I feel like you are not gonna be able to ask the other person to show me this. So it's good for you to practice it yourself. So now you're actually creating an admin machine for yourself so you can access Active Directory so you can pull that information that we're looking for. How do you do that? First of all, you need to look for that RSAT for Windows 7. So you need to go to the Internet Explorer and in here you're going to go to the Google and this is will, this will be the same process for Windows 10 but remember for Windows 10 you got to know your version number to install exact uh, RSAT okay so here we're gonna do RSAT just like that and you see that Windows 7 and I'm going to type download this is a very important piece right here to for you to know because that's how we kind of like you know manage things and this is how you will be managing your calls for Active Directory and many other calls that you will come across it will come across to your mind then that okay this is how you do things you know so here you you're going to click on download and now it's going to ask you is your system 64 bit or 32 bit simply uh, start click on start menu right click on computer and go to properties and you will know what computer you're using so if it's 32 bit it will say 32 if it's 64 it will say 64 according to that we are going to download the 86 x86 means 32 so we're going to download that if you were 64 then you're going to download the 64 one and now we're installing our sat on this computer this means that now we're making this machine more like a server but it's actually not a server it is just accessing the server through this remote administration tool which which will make this computer a pretty powerful machine so that is exactly what we are doing right now. So while we are doing this, let's talk about this is uh, this is basically downloading it now and you will see a pop up and there you go. It just started the installation. And remember our goal is what? We want to access that data. We want to create this data. So now let me let me talk about this this stuff too. So Every time you have an issue, one of the things that I tell my members and students, you need to really go to spiceworks.com and, and, and register yourself to the community. I do not get paid for this, by the way. This is just a community with a lot of IT people and a lot of solutions. So many people are really good at PowerShell and they, they share information like this. So I want to say thank you to anyone because that is kind of like what, when you get the best answers, you have always say thank you to the person. So big green man. Thank you. So you, usually you will come here and then look for what the problem is. You can actually put your own problems in there. And in a few minutes, you will see answers from professionals that are really good in their stuff. And here, I just want to show you the example of this. The reason I'm sharing this because one, you will know how to do this. Second, you will know how to copy the command and use it into the labs, which is kind of like the most important thing for you uh, when you practice on these things. So you hear the update is done. We're going to click on yes. And now, we are going to basically um, download and configure the RSAT. Now remember, this is just uh, adding it to the computer. We still have to configure it for what we need, okay? Now, 
most of the time this is the same process for windows 10 but like i said it is it depends on a version of windows 10 so you need to know which version you're using and in windows 10 if i go quickly over here just want to show you and here you're just gonna go and search and for example this is what win were you're going to do the same thing over here win were and now this is 1607 i believe they don't have one for 1607 but there's a tricky way people have done that so go to google and type rsat for windows 10 1607 if you do have one 1607 if you don't i think they have the other versions the new one but this one people have it working and you just need to follow the google and do the same process that i'm doing on windows 7 right now and you can do that on this one so right now this is getting installed. I'm going to pause this video and come back once this is done. So once it's done, you will see this message will pop up like that. You just close that and then installation complete. You don't need to restart the machine. Now what we need to do is the next part is to configure it. You're going to go to control panel. In control panel, you'll go to programs and you will go to turn Windows features on and off. And similarly, you'll go the same way and windows 10 and it will be doing the same thing um but again it depends on the version they may have a like it as an update already in the the new updates so you'll go down and here you will see remote server administration tools right after when you do this installation you get this then what you want to do is you will scroll and you will just open this remote administration tool you see what you have over here you have adds active directory stuff right here so if i expand this watch i have this stuff right here with extremely important adds tools so if i click on that if you remember one of our um you know username and password resets videos and stuff like that for active directory this is something that you can add dhcp dns and everything that is a little bit out of this video so i'm not going to do that what i'm interested in is in this uh, if you, I go down, I'm looking for Windows Active Directory module, Active Directory module for PowerShell. This is what we are looking for. So we're going to click OK. And now this will install the module on this computer. But then we still need to import it. It will not work without just doing this will not be enough for us to use a Windows PowerShell. Now, this is where you will do this. Now, right now, this is done. All we have to do is once this is finished, you're going to click on start over here and let's look for PowerShell. Now you see, I can open this module from here and do the same thing, but I want to use PowerShell. So to do this, just to kind of show you how things are done, you, you will run this as an administrator. Now this is where the piece uh, comes in for learning the lab stuff too. If you're going to be importing stuff let's say for example i'm looking for this this is something that i was looking for and i'm going to go ahead and click on copy this and use this command to try to learn this stuff right if i right click over here nothing is working so i need to click on this plus sign click on clipboard once i click on the clipboard you're going to click on paste right here and then send to remote and here you will open the notepad here you will open the notepad and click right click and paste right here you see right now it is copied over here so somehow this sent to remote is not working over here you really need to use a notepad like that and now i can control all exactly the same thing and then i'm going to copy it go to the powershell again let's close this stuff so we have it clear so i'm going to go right here right click and as soon as you right click on here it will automatically copy it now watch this is going to fail there you go it failed because we really need to import that first thing we need to do is to type import and when you click on tab it is going to complete the command so here we need to look for import module so module active directory so when we do that right now it, it ported that module into our powershell now the next step is again going back and then running this command but you got to make sure that you remove the temp from here. Remember, there's no folder temp in this computer. I'm just copying that from internet, right? Unless you go to C drive and make a temp folder, it is going to work. But if I run this right now, there you go. It worked because there's no error. So now if I go back to my computer and go to C drive, I will have that 
CSV file right here. Of course, if you don't have Microsoft Office, then CSV will not work like that. All you have to do is to click on open and it will ask you, what do you want to open this uh, you know, file in? I can just use, let's say Notepad. And I'm going to use that and let's uncheck this and open, open that. So there you go. I found out in, I mean, I'm not even in Windows 10 right now. Remember, I'm in Windows 7. That, that was the main purpose of it, to retrieve the information of Windows 10 in my whole entire company and know what version they are on right now. This is at Windows 10 Enterprise 10.014393. So if I go to my page right here, 14393 is what? Let's look for that. 14393 is right here. It's 1607. 1607. 1607. And it tells you that it is the Enterprise version. Um, so, and you have many more over here if you want to learn more about it. But the main key of this video is what? How to first install the RSAT and why it is important for this specific purpose. That now you can actually go back to the features and turn on many other features like Active Directory, users and computers, DHCP, DNS and stuff like that. And then you can work from it and connect to your users, computers and things like that. Now, how did it get this information? From where? From where did it get this information? This is a learning piece. This is a domain controller. Remember, this is our main machine. This is where people will not let you access, but you may get access. So you see, if I click on tools, this domain controller comes with this kind of stuff already in it. So this is where it is extracting that information. Remember, Active Directory users and computers right here. And when I click on it, it took that information from here. It went down there. It went to the computer and then it went to here and it got the information from this machine that is connected to Active Directory. It makes your life extremely simple, super because what if you have 3000 machines or 500 machine and imagine in one click of like that few clicks in a PowerShell command right here, you just got the whole list like this. This is a real world one right here like this and you found out every single version and now I can copy this and you know go to any deployment tools and just make packages specifically based on this and if this was a issue if this was a call that i need to find this and i need to deploy to 300 machine and if i didn't know how to do these kind of things imagine how much time i'm going to spend and that is what makes you an it person so try to learn this stuff i mean the only way you're going to learn it to actually practice so if you do want to practice this stuff on these labs make sure you go to jobsclashare.org and in jobsclashare, let me open the other one. In jobsclashare.org, you will basically go to the membership level on the same site. So you're gonna go here and then you will basically buy the premium um, uh, uh, membership. In the premium membership, then you get access to our labs like this for one year. And you can open as many labs. You know, imagine we just, we just finished that in a few minutes. I can go back to 60 minutes again by just clicking on it. And that will give you again you can practice on this now you can also do the same process on windows if you have server uh, access available but for this the same thing you need to um you need to get the rsat and then turn on these features do you see if i click on tools i don't see that active directory stuff right here so this would be a good test for you guys if you uh, learn this go and search on google type windows server uh, you know RSAT command or something like that and you will get that command right click in the PowerShell right here It comes with PowerShell everything is in there all, almost everything is in there And then you will type the command over here You're going to get the RSAT and on this server with just one command and then you can do the same process Just like you did on Windows 7 and you get the results But most likely you are going to be using Windows 7 or 10 machines So it's a good practice for you Try to do these kind of things. Try to come up with your own scenarios. What can you use this? What can you use uh, Active Directory or PowerShell to retrieve information? And then how are you going to use this information then uh, by using PDQ Deploy or maybe some other ways? Or maybe you're just wanting to ch share that information with your help desk. You know, hey, th th these are the machines. I, I removed the names, but these are the machines. There are 100 machines you guys need to update it or something like that. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you, this video is beneficial. And if you do like these type of videos, make sure you comment and let me know. I will make more. Thank you.